Hey everybody, Dave here. How are you all doing tonight on Syndicated Pipe Club? We are doing well. I've been brought back to the world of the dual monitors. And I'm still wearing my glasses, which is something I don't normally do. But they're on. I'm not taking them off now. How are you doing tonight, Greg? A little disappointed because I, for a second there, thought you said dual monsters, not dual uh, monitors. And so... I, I kind of got excited that we were possibly going to do a Yu-Gi-Oh! episode. Um, but, uh, you know, other than that uh, slight disappointment, uh, I'm, doing, I'm doing well. How about yourself? Mm, not bad, not bad. Things are... are good. I was really uh, not expecting to be able to be back to dual monitors and uh, having things where I can see everything again and not just having to do one thing and then do 30 in post, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a good it's a good time. It's a good time. Oh yeah, I mean, there's nothing quite like dual monitors uh, and working with them. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's hard to go back when uh, when you've been when you get the luxury of working with two monitors. You know, it's one of those things where you it's one of those things where you might think like, oh, you know, I don't necessarily need need that. You know, that's a little too extensive for what I do. But, uh, you know, as soon as it's done, you feel that disappointment and void in your life. Oh, yes. My buddy was over here the one day and he saw my setup. He said, what do you even need two monitors for? Everything. I said, they're going, well, bud, if you ever get your YouTube channel up and running and you're recording videos and you're doing this, that, and the other thing and doing three different things at once. I said, well, let's put it to you this way. We both used to work in the same call center. I said, I said do you remember when, back when we were working at such and such a place? Yes. Just think, we had like about five or six or seven different things we had to have open at once. Yeah. And we managed it on a screen. However, if we had this, how much better would it have been? We could have had the help files open on this screen and the customer service stuff opened up on this screen. And how much time would we have saved? Tons. No, absolutely. I I used my dual monitors all the time uh, back at my job. Uh, and... Uh, even with what I'm doing now, it would be nice to just have one screen open for, uh, you know, writing and then the other page for like, uh, you know, even like a music player or uh, a web a web page open for research or whatever. It would be handy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it absolutely is. When you're when you're doing all kinds of things, even gaming, having uh, having the yeah. game playing on the main monitor and a side one, for like you said, for music, or if you happen to be you know, new to Minecraft and doing doing a build, you can have the tutorial right there on your second monitor. And with as you're streaming, being able to interact with the chat. Yep, that too. Yeah, and even with it, you know, like it, it makes sense for you, like why you would need it uh, with like video editing. Mm -hmm. uh, audio editing, uh, all sorts of stuff. Oh yeah, I, I never knew how uh, how much dual monitors would change how how, you, how your workflow goes. I always, thought, I always thought people were crazy, but no, it's just, if you, if you use it, it's necessary. And once you get used to it, it's like having an arm amputated. I know that seems to be a little extreme, but go to a dual monitor setup and then lose a monitor for a day. You'll understand. Or, yeah, or I would say maybe it's like, uh, you know, if you, now that we're older, if you say like sleep wrong and like one of your like uh, wrists is out of commission and you have to try to like type and get your work done, uh, you can still use that injured wrist. Like how you can get it done, but it's you're going a lot slower than uh, than you'd like. Mm. Very much so. But things got edited. It turned out okay. I didn't get the banner on there having a 
having the the YouTube and the uh, and uh, the Twitter stuff, but other than that, we didn't miss we didn't miss much. So it worked out. Nice, nice. Now over here, we're going to be uh, upgrading a uh, microphone, like what I was talking about off air, and uh, also uh, going to be kind of not sprucing that up behind me, uh, but I'm going to be adding uh, some uh, a decor uh, back there. I won a uh, Instagram uh, contest last week. Oh, nice! Where I got uh, a nice uh, painting done by uh, an artist on there that. Uh, I like his work and was very excited to learn that I, I won something. Um, it's not a badger, but it is animal and type related, so that'll uh, uh, go up there. And I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. It arrived today, but it needs like a frame. Yeah, just a little bit of housekeeping before we get into the main part of the episode. We had a comment on uh, the last episode I did of the Tabacuum t- Hypothesis Part 3 from. Uh, uh, Jay Hughes, thank you so much for uh, for your comments. I responded back to it already, but I just wanted to shout you out and uh, let you know that if you haven't seen the reply, there's one there. Go check it out. Very cool. And now, on to why we're here. Smoking pipes and talking about Avatar. This week, the episode Jet. But, Greg, what are you smoking tonight? Uh, tonight, I am smoking this uh, Kamoi uh, Coachman. It's a Ben Billiard. Uh, I've had this uh, for a... Uh, yeah, I have it. I've had this pipe for a while. It's kind of been put... It was put aside for a while. Uh, but, uh, I don't know, I just felt like breaking it out again and uh, giving it another shot, because uh, after our, our chat off-air yesterday, uh, last week... Uh, I don't know, like normally I'm a street pipe guy, but uh, I wanted to, you know, give Ben Pipes uh, some more uh, attention. Hmm. And I uh, brought this one out. Um, the tobacco is uh, Captain Earl's Night Watch, which is a nice, uh, you know, little uh, lot of Kia blend. How about you? What are you smoking? Well, tonight I'm smoking one of my Cobb mods, which I recently had to repair because it hit the floor and cracked just the wrong way. But fixable, so I have here my uh, MacArthur sitter. Well, it was at one time a full MacArthur pipe. The only modification I actually made to it, aside from doing the custom stem and the stem work, is making it so it can sit. Let me see if I can balance the sucker on my hand for the camera so you can see it do its thing. There we go. So, it's a really deep bowl. I mean, it's, the bowl is, I literally did this before we started, this deep. So, needless to say, I'm not changing pipes tonight. And in it, I'm smoking 965 from Dunhill. I was going to say, uh, did you do the fold and stuff method with a flake? If I'd have done that, I'd still be smoking this pipe on Friday. I may still be smoking this pipe on Friday. We'll find out on Friday. <laughs> Might still be smoking it next Friday. Maybe. But, Jet, the the episode of the Avatar that uh, 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 and introduces a new character who is, contrary to popular belief, not an airplane. Yes. Yeah. That's a interesting name. Um, I read online some people think he looks like uh, Spike from Cowboy Bebop. Like a young version of him. I couldn't say. I've never seen the character you're referring to, so I I don't know. Mm. I've heard of it. I've heard of Cowboy Bebop, but I've just not seen. Yeah, no, it's surprising just because it's a very, like, one of the most uh, well-regarded animes. Yeah. still to this day uh, i haven't watched the whole series but i did watch uh, quite a few episodes back in college when i would come home from uh, college uh, school and i was on summer break at home not my favorite anime i get why it's popular i'm more in the my favorite anime tends to be more on the 
the juvenile type of uh you know like giant ro well it does have robots in it but uh more just uh you know on the gundam side i, mm -hmm. I suppose mm -hmm. but uh you know also friendship friendship is very important to me this was just a little too uh mature for my tastes so the avatar is basically just miss for you just missing giant robots and that would be perfect yeah yeah pretty much like uh and is just although uh, it does have a little bit of um interesting technology with the uh, fire nation ships so and i know uh cora goes into kind of some steampunk kind of stuff i think or at least the design had it that way yeah, so you know i i at least like it's interesting uh architecture and uh other stuff that and that gets my uh uh, interest as well. Excellent. So, is there anything in particular about this particular episode, aside from the name of the character who is not a plane? Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that, I'm gonna beat that joke to death tonight. I'm sure of it. Um, anything in particular about the episode that you uh, found enjoyable? I know there was something we talked about off air last week that. Uh, a little spoilery, but it's kind of funny. Uh, no, I thought this episode was unremarkable. Next. Okay, there you have uh, it, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I liked that it was a, a good uh, Sokka episode. I was excited to see that it was, uh, you know, something to, to give him a lot to do. And uh, even, you know, even once uh, like the second half of the episode not really featuring him much at all, it, he's still he, it was because he was off doing an important role and uh, uh, I really like that he's uh, currently probably my favorite character uh, on the show so uh, again it was just nice to see him being very uh, useful for this one not just the comic relief Yeah, he's always at his best when he's useful. When he's the useful comic relief, where he can do both, be useful and be funny. This wasn't one of those episodes, but that's okay. There were some uh, some moments in it. It was a more really on the on, the, on the, the whole tone of it though was a little bit more serious than some episodes we've had in the past. Mm hmm. Yeah. No. This uh, this episode was very. Uh... I think, I don't want to say grim, but it kind of, in a way, I would describe this episode as kind of like uh, an inversion of like, say, Peter Pan. You know, you have, uh, you know, someone like, you know, you know, Peter Pan, you know, a swordsman, uh, you know, very, uh, very talented in, in Jet and his uh, Lost Boys with uh you know the other members of his gang and they're very charismatic very fun uh and you want to you know work with them but when you realize but once it's realized like what you know they're actually doing you realize that uh they've definitely gone down a darker path for sure. And, you know, can you blame them, really? No. This is a bunch of kids, probably under the age of 18, who are all homeless, and they know who to blame for their suffering in general, the Fire Nation. So, of course, they're going to be, you know, raiding and, you know, doing little little things against soldiers and things like that. You know what? I, I'd probably be right there with them at that, at that age. But, uh, yeah. Dark is right. You don't, you don't find out about it until darn near the end of the episode. But, uh, turns out the mission to rid the Valley of the Fire Nation also includes the destruction of an Earth Kingdom town and 
ton of innocent people. Right. It, in a lot of ways, you know, they're they're very much a parallel of uh, Aang, Katara, and Sokka, but uh, they're they just went down a, the, a different path, uh, one that is much more gray than mm-hmm. uh, what our heroes are going on, where they're willing to do things that might be, you know, repulsive to other people in the name of the greater good. And you have to you have to point out that Sokka was suspicious of Jet basically from the get go. Mm-hmm. Even though at first he really had no reason to to be. Well, first I always, I got it from the sense of he was a little jealous that uh, everyone was uh, you know fawning over Jet and that uh, he was much more useful than uh, Sokka was, and then. It switches when Jet uh, goes to you know, use Sokka and needs him, and Sokka proves to be useful in their next uh, uh, excursion out mm. and, and kind of proves himself. But it's uh, you know what he sees, you know, going on and everything that uh, gets him to realize that. Uh, these uh, these kids may not be up to entirely good uh, things. Yeah, it, it's one thing you know to take on trained soldiers, like we see in the in the first few minutes of the episode, where they're taking on the camp of uh, Fire Nation uh, soldiers. It's complete other to uh, gang up on a helpless old man, even though he is Fire Nation, mm-hmm. and. That's what set Sokka on the path of, nope, we are done. He is a bully. He's up to something. It's not right. We need to get out of here. Yeah, and that's uh, nice to see. You know, like it's, again, Sokka might be the comic relief of the group. Uh, In some ways, Aang can be too. He's playing the, you know, the clown uh, to throw his enemies off, kind of like it's like the Spider-Man thing. Uh, you know, you're goofy and tell jokes, uh, but that's a way to kind of you know throw your enemies off, especially enemies that are as serious as uh, Zuko. Um, but uh, you know, Sokka, like he is more kind of like just intentionally funny in the sense that you're laughing at him rather than laughing with uh, Aang, per se. But it, it's good to see these moments to, to show that, yes, yeah, he can be kind of funny, uh, and you make fun of him a bit, but uh, he's still, ha- and he may kind of have a bigger, higher opinion of himself than he probably should, um, or at least that he puts on. But there's still something very uh, intelligent uh, about him. He's very and he's very perceptive, especially in this uh, episode. And uh, he's worth you know listening to. Yeah. Let's talk about Jet's hideout for a moment. That thing's pretty cool. Like, lightning back to the Peter Pan uh, parody. Like, if I was to, like, just hear the story of Peter Pan and not have seen any of the movies that have come out ever about the character, Disney or otherwise, I would expect the Lost Boys to be living in something like that. Yeah. Houses in the trees, zip lines all over the place. That's what I would imagine as Peter Pan's hideout. So that thing's just cool. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, great, uh, great design for sure. Of course, it would be kids that would come up with something as cool as that. Of course. Because it's the ultimate treehouse. Of 
course. I mean, really, when you and when you think about it, we all wish we had that awesome treehouse growing up that you see in movies. Growing up, I wish I had it now. <laughs> oh, for sure. I'm, you know, to go off on a slight tangent, on my way to work, uh, uh, on this way that I drive sometimes, uh, we pass by this house that actually has like this treehouse for adults in the back, uh, in the backyard where it's like they built like a gazebo like around like the upper part of the tree and uh, like it's like really professionally built and they let you can look into it and see like the gap that they've left for to allow the tree to grow so it's not gonna be destroyed in a like couple of years like it's it's something that's been built to last and it's always every time we pass it I always have to look at and be like man like I wish we had something that cool in my backyard. Yeah, me too. I had something that cool in the backyard. I'd be making sure the Wi-Fi could reach there. That would be where I'd be right now. The computer, everything. It would all be up in the treehouse. Absolutely. Even if I had to run an extension cord from my outside port all the way up there, I would do it. But um, what, another thing about Jet um, is he's definitely a formidable force. Like he's, you know, gave Aang trouble, uh, and even uh, both Aang and Katara they had to really work together to stop him. Yes, they did. I mean, anybody familiar with martial arts knows those swords or at least the look of them the ones that jet were using i'm trying to remember the name of them i'm going to try to look it up and from what i i don't like i said i don't right remember the name off the top of my head but what i do remember about people who use those particular type of swords because as you can see they're designed to hook together and the hooks are used to catch spears like the way they had Jet using the swords is true to form. Mm. It reminded me, I, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the Mortal Kombat series, but they remind me of uh, the weapons that uh, Cabal uses. He's one of my uh, favorite characters from that series. Oh, they're really simple. They're either called hook swords or twin hooks. Or, I'm not going to try to pronounce the Chinese name for them, the Tiger Head Hook. They are typically associated with the northern styles of Chinese martial arts and are considered to be three weapons in one. And two swords, one large sword whip, and I don't know what the other weapon is, but it's been a while, and this article does not tell me what the three classifications are, but still. There you have it. The tiger head swords, hook swords, properly represented in that character. Yeah. All the videos I've seen of those being used look like that. In some ways, it, it kind of reminds me of, uh, um, like, size. Like with uh, that, uh, like Raphael uses, just because uh, they're used to kind of like catch uh, swords, uh, really, you know, block sword strikes and kind of break blades if uh, used correctly. The difference between the two, one of the main differences between the two, is sides are close combat and these are medium range. Yeah. So I certainly wouldn't want to be up with, against somebody who knows how to use those things. Ever. Sure. But I like the fact... Uh, I, I like the concept behind both of them. In the sense that they're just, you know... They have a unique take on a, a bladed weapon. 
in that they're uh, defensive as much as uh, they are offensive. So I think the, uh, the other thing I want to talk about uh, throughout this, uh, that, was, that was running through this episode was we see Katara with a little crush this episode on Jet. Mm -hmm. Which does kind of lead me to that one thing that happens like way down the road in season three. Where they parody that in the, one of the final episodes of the, of the, of the show. Oh, the... Um the play. Mm-hmm. It's very funny. I look forward to... Yeah, I only watched uh, as much as that I had seen for this episode. Uh, well, for season one, uh, with that episode. Yeah, and... Uh... When you get there, if you are watching this and, and listening to us as you're going through the Avatar, when you get there, you will enjoy seeing things recapped. Because, you know, the, the recap episode they do, it, it's good. They do it as a, as a play. And uh, it goes through pretty much everything. Recounts it all. And gives a, it gives a Fire Nation spin to how the series should end. Yeah, it's all done tongue in cheek. It oh, makes yeah. sense uh, to uh, you know rib the characters, and uh, it's very uh, entertaining. I'm not that humorless. But anyway, um, also uh, before we, uh, I think, wrap up this episode. Uh, how about that uh, ice move that Katara used? Like, that's the first time we've seen her do that, right? That's the first time we've seen her do that intentionally. We've seen her do it backwards before. Right in uh, the first couple episodes, like, she does do that ice maneuver, but... Backwards. Hmm. So this is the first time we actually see her use it properly, so... I'd say that was a cool move. That can be, if you're wondering well, how, how she got that all of a sudden, um, well, do you really think they're not doing anything between episodes? Yeah, no, <laughs> I, and I'm not, I, like, I'm not saying, like, hey, show, like, what are you doing here? Oh, I didn't, um, I didn't mean, the, I didn't mean you specifically, like, I'm just, oh, for sure. I'm just talking um, to the theoretical person in the, in the comments going, hey. Right. What about this? Uh, yeah, no, I just thought it was a uh, pretty clever Oh yes, and of course, I'm I'm, I'm sure in having foreknowledge that Katara will have quite the control over her ice moves down the road. Oh, for sure. But all that being said, I am pretty much uh, through what I wanted to talk about about this episode. Again, another good episode. You very rarely have one that's a miss with Avatar, which is why it's so, prop so popular 20 years later. Oh. Scary to think. Hmm. What's yeah. really scary to think is, just to go off on my own little tangent... Shows I was watching as a kid, like, say, the original DuckTales, when it came out on tube TVs over the airwaves, I'm now watching on Disney Plus digitally with my kids. That's scary. Oh, for sure. Uh, last week, I was at a friend's place, and a Reliant K song came up. And like I was listening, I was like, "Oh, that's a, I think that's Reliant K." No, oh, I haven't heard this song in like years. Oh my goodness, this song is twenty years old. And then I proceeded to age 
at that moment and then uh, turn into dust. The realization. I got better. But, uh, yeah, obviously. You reconstituted yeah. yourself just in time for the show. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, this, uh, uh, yeah, I, I like this episode a lot. It, uh, so, so many interesting characters, uh, and it's interesting for them to meet characters that, uh, you know, could be allies, but uh, instead it's uh, more of like a realization of we don't want to go down the same path that they've gone. That's all I. Uh, that's all I can think of for uh, this episode. All right. So that all being said, if you want to keep up with us throughout the week, you can always find me at Doctor Alien Two Hundred One on Twitter, and the show you can find there on Instagram. Check out our Facebook page where all shows that are produced by me are at Doctor Alien Productions on Facebook. You can even find my own personal Facebook page, not profile, but an actual page because I don't use the profile. So I, gave, I made myself a page, like I'm an actual professional blogger. No, not really. It's just, I feel a little more in control that way. It's a quick. Anyway, um, and uh, there was something else that I can't remember. Greg, where can they find you? Find me on Twitter at the underscore Dr. Parker, as well as on Instagram at the Dr. If the limits of social media, uh, like the 128 characters, 128 characters, whatever it is, it's just not enough for you, you can always email us at reversewatchtime at gmail.com. Still just getting jumped out of that address. Come on, people. Give me an email. With all that being said, too, at this point, we're just wishing good smokes, great entertainment.